Hello and welcome back and today I'm going to continue looking at NAS and UPS systems. If you've not already caught the other videos, let me get you up to speed. What I'm doing at the moment is making my way through a number of the top tier NAS brands out there in both home and business circles and showing you what happens when you connect one of them to a UPS system and then you have a power outage. I'm going to be utilising this CyberPower um, UPS system that they've sent. Thank you, for, thank you once again. Um, they've sent this system, and what I'm going to do is connect this to the mains power, get the batteries nice and fully charged, and then I'm going to connect the TerraMaster NAS to this UPS, and then we're going to simulate a mains power failure. I'm going to remove the power connection between this UPS and the wall, and then we're going to see what the TerraMaster does. Do we have a system of alerts? Do we have beeps? Do we have anything that helps us work on in the event of a power failure because having a ups is useful don't get me wrong in the world of nas and i recommend it not just with a nas but with this supporting up to eight simultaneous devices with pcs and security systems stuff basically stuff that needs mains power a ups can work as a suitable alternative in the event of that mains power power going but in a nas you don't want it to run the nas what you want in a perfect scenario is with the ups connected to the nas in the event of a power failure, you want the NAS to shut down. You want it to basically finish all the things it needs to do before it can safely shut itself down. Because in the event of a power failure, a NAS, and this is an empty box by the way, don't worry, if those drives are working, it can cause huge damage that even RAID may not protect you from if multiple disks are affected. So that's the point of today's video. We want to know what happens inside this Acer store in the event of a power failure while it's connected. What are our software options? Are there hardware options? But otherwise, let's make our way to the screen where we'll simulate this power failure now. Right, so here we are on the desktop interface here of our TerraMaster NAS. Now, a few things we should knock out straight off the bat. Um, hopefully on screen right now, you've got the footage recording the uh, UPS and the TerraMaster NAS all powered in together. And if you look on screen right now, I'm going to have to look to my right, um, the TerraMaster NAS, that five bay there, all nice and silver. Uh, you can probably see a purple cable, a kind of light violet cable, connecting that to the UPS. This acts as a heartbeat. It essentially sends certain information and pushes to the NAS from the UPS. The UPS, once again, the CyberPower 1500 here, it's got its own um, brain, it's got its own network interface, but we're not using those today. We are using the NAS's own setup. You can also see that the power connector from the TerraMaster NAS is also connected to the UPS below, and that UPS is connected to a mains power point there on the wall to the left. Now, while we're looking at this, it's also worth highlighting that right now, all of the power being supplied to the NAS in order for us to navigate all the options here on screen, open up applications, all that sort of stuff, is being supplied by the UPS. The UPS is what's giving the power for this device to run. And in today's video, we are going to kill the power connection between the wall, so the mains outlet, and the UPS. And then from that point, it's up to the NAS and the UPS to work together. Now, the next thing I want to highlight is what's going to happen in the event of a notification. There we go, it's talking about abnormally, you can ignore all of those. That's when I've been mucking around with the device over the last few weeks while getting the new office sorted out. But once the device powers down, it's worth mentioning that there are a number of ways in which the TerraMaster NAS can tell you. Now, we are only looking at one today. We are looking at the direct user interface here of using a web browser to access the inside of our TerraMaster NAS. But if we create administrative users here, then set up remote access here, and then connect over the internet or the network, this admin account with full access using the TNAS remote online system, and then using the mobile applications and client apps, we can have it so that in the event of a power failure report from the UPS to the TerraMaster NAS, you will find out anywhere in the world. You'll get a notification on your phone to let you know what's happening and then give you the opportunity to do something about it. Today, we're going to look at two different outcomes. We're going to look at uh, what happens when the power fails in a standby and in a shutdown cold mode. So we've already connected the UPS. We have to make our way to the hardware and power tab here. And from here, 
we can see all these tabs here that give us information about the hardware we're using and when you can change the fans and stuff like that but what we're going to look at today is the ups tab now this is the tab we'll get that straight and center is where we're going to navigate and change all of our options so if we enable ups support on the device the first thing it's going to do is give us real-time information at the bottom of the ups now bear in mind the estimated runtime is based on the current draw of power from this Terramaster NAS from that UPS. This number will obviously change depending on the greater draw of power. And even though the PSU of the Terramaster, like any other NAS, is rated at a certain wattage, it's worth mentioning that the amount of power that it draws will never exceed that, but can often be lower than that depending on how it's accessed. And this will change what this estimated time will be now another thing you can do here is alter how long you want it to be before the ups shuts the system down what that means is when the nav receives uh, a kind of notification to say that power has ceased uh, into the ups the ups then tells the nav and the nav can decide whether it wants to one shut down in a certain length of time so you can set it so that if it's doing read-write operations or if you're accessing um, the NAS remotely and you want to be able to take care of some last-minute stuff, back something up, transfer files, or cease a read-write operation, you can change this to minutes, seconds, or hours for how long the NAS will stay operational off the power of the UPS for you to do any last-minute changes or carryovers. The alternative is to not have that enabled at all. And if you do that, what will happen is, in the event that the UPS tells the, the NAS, the TerraMaster NAS, that there has been a power problem, the NAS will safely shut itself down to a cold state. And that means you have to physically reboot the device again. The other alternative is to set it until low battery. What that means is the NAS will continue to work until the UPS reports low battery mode. Now that does change depending on the UPS supplier. But in the case of CyberPower, it ranges uh, by default at around 15 to 20%, but this can be set as high or low as you need. In this particular CyberPower, the 1500 class has got eight power connectors on the rear, which means up to eight devices can be supported without power cable splitters. You can also set the NAS to be a network UPS server. And the, the UPS, UPS we're using, this CyberPower 1500, is already network UPS server enabled. But if it wasn't, and if it was one of the cheaper ones, one of the ones that doesn't have much of a brain or a network interface, you can set it up that your NAS is a network UPS server to all the other connected devices. What that means is, if you've got loads of PCs, lots of modems, lots of hardware in your operational environment that run off the power, you can set it up that um, the NAS will tell all of those devices to shut themselves down. So the NAS can work, not only can the UPS work with the NAS, the NAS can work with the UPS. I'm not going to enable that, but it is a nice option to have. So, without further ado, let's test this theory. For now, we're going to do a shutdown. We're going to let this shut down immediately. So we're not going to have the time management. What we're going to do is we've enabled UPS support. We're going to click apply. This is going there. We want that to be zero seconds. We're going to click apply. And now it is going to enable uh, automatic shutdown one second after the UPS messages the TerraMaster to say power has failed. Uh, once this is updated, I'm going to make my way over to the other side of the room, which you can see on camera. And then I'm going to power down uh, well, not even power down, I'm going to rip the power cable out of the wall for the UPS to send its push notification through. Okay, making my way over. And here we are. One, two, three. 
removed. Put on the light still there. So that beeping you've heard represents the UPS acknowledging that the mains power has failed. As you can see, the lights are still functioning on that TerraMaster NAS, and we've got a couple of green lights there. One simulating um, network access, and another one simulating that the drive is still mounted. Uh, it normally takes a very, very short while for the UPS to let the NAS know that an incident has occurred. And we can see right now by that next beep that we're going to start to see the TerraMaster react to what's going on. So we go back to there, we've still got uh, none of the alerts from earlier. Carry on, shut you down. And let's have a look, is the device going to shut down? We can hear the UPS fans kicking in there. But is the NAS going to be shutting down safely for us? As we can see, we can no longer connect here. The device is now severing itself from the network. So we'll come out of there. If we try to access any of the options, what we're looking at now is a dead window because the NAS itself is now severing connectivity and shutting itself down. Even if we duplicate this in a new tab on that IP, we can see that connection has been severed and that's because the NAS has shut itself down safely. So I can see here on the other side of the room the UPS is still continuing to support the TerraMaster NAS but the TerraMaster NAS has now ceased and is starting to go into standby and now eventually shut down mode. Have a look here but again we've now completely severed connection so I'm going to make my way to the other side of the room. Well, the UPS is still running, but the TerraMaster is now in standby mode. It has now ceased functionality, and from this point on, until power is reintroduced, and I press that power button, the TerraMaster NAS will not be accessible. But what that also means is our data is lovely and safe, which is kind of what you want, if you, particularly if you've got read-write operations, and if you wanted to commit some of those time based um, shutdown so you want to access it remotely but still get the alerts but i'm going to i'm going to wrap things up here uh, thank you so much for watching i hope you found this helpful do bear in mind that ups's do change and that there are different ones out there and the cyberpower one we're using today is available via the links in the description but otherwise thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this click like if you did click subscribe to learn more and i'll see you next time